Canada has locally sourced high quality dairy products with great success for decades. But the Canadian government has decided to fuck that all up and open its cream holes to imported American moo juice. Introducing Coca Cola. Canada's most American way to ingest recumbent bovine growth hormone. Coca-Cola comes from big fake American jugs injected with synthetic compounds made to pump those itty bitty titty committees into big swollen sacks of sexy somatic cells you just wanna fucking suck on. <sighs> American milk products are so exciting. They are even banned in Europe, Japan, Australia, and other countries full of flat-chested, sour-milked, ugly, fat cow bitches. Help scientists identify the long-term effects of recombinant bovine growth hormone on humans. You've been sucking from America's teat for this long. Why stop now? Drink Coca-Cola, Canada. Hello, welcome to Glorious and Free. I'm Brian O'Gorman, and uh, this is my friend Dinesh Anwar, Hello. everybody. Welcome, Dinesh. Hey. Thanks hello. for coming, man. Good to be here. And uh, so everybody knows Dinesh is a great comedian <laughs> in Toronto and uh, also owns and runs the uh, show Your Hood's a Joke, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your show? Uh, yeah, sure. A little so bit about <laughs> the show? <laughs> it's a territorial roast battle. So, you know, we make fun of uh, people from different places. You know, you rep your own country, your city, your school, your province however you want to you know define a hood people who have beef with each other like i've lived around the world so i like i've seen people argue with each other over like basic territorial shit right so this is something that everybody instantly relates to no matter where you are at, you're at you might not understand the specifics of like brazil versus nicaragua but you understand why people hate their neighbors <laughs> right it's <laughs> like yeah i get it same problem with hamilton so yeah. so that's that's everybody has a shelbyville that's everybody's exactly everybody's, everybody's got a scarborough <laughs> yeah, a place next to them where they're like yeah uh, you know it's so funny too because yeah people never have like competitions where it would be like beneficial to both sides but like why don't we both compete against each other to see who could like yeah. come up with a better science experiment it's always mm -hmm. like let's smash our kids head against each other yeah yeah see no who's better <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of the I like this because it's not you're not just picking on anybody. It's it's a fight, right? right? So each side gets a shot. First of all, it's not just somebody going fuck the Chinese yeah, and yeah. fuck the Iranians. But it's, it's like these classic like t uh, battles between neighbors that everybody's always maybe wanted to blow off some steam. Yeah, say absolutely. Those things without absolutely. sort of. Uh, because, I mean, a lot of times maybe people have feel that tension and they want to get it out, but they don't really mean the things that they're saying. Exactly. It's context. It's just a place to vent, really. And a lot of times it's complicated history. People are complicated. Ethnic rivalry, in my opinion, is almost worse than racial like hatred because I can understand like a primal logic in hating or misunderstanding someone who looks completely different than you. Right. But ethnic hate is like this person looks exactly like you. That's your but brother. They, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. they call it chicken curry and you call it curry chicken. Let's have a war. You're That's, right though, but I mean know? the closer people are, the more vicious the fighting is. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Like all those murder victims, they usually know they're, they're, they're killer, right? So 100%. it's like, you know, you could go all over the world, you know. Ireland, you know, like the Palestine, Israel thing, yeah, India, absolutely. Pakistan. See, I think it's a cool way to, to, to do a roast battle. I'm not a big fan of, like, to be honest with you, competitive art, right? Right, yes. But yeah, or, like, yeah. competition in um, art. But with I, I, I can't help loving, like, roast battles, man. Like, I yeah. can't help but loving... It's like, not a people. real contest, though. It's just, an, it's just a reason to yeah, diss right. each other. And exactly. then people say, oh, this guy won. Nobody cares, Nobody right? Yeah, yeah. It's really more about saying those things, getting it out there, getting yeah. a laugh. And that's it. It's very cathartic. So what's been your favorite one so far? Israel versus Iran got picked up by a Polish newspaper. Like I, I was talking, yeah. we were talking about this before the show. They, they're they cracking down on their Jewish population in Poland. Like anti-Semitism is on the rise. So I think that's why they picked up this clip because there's so many Jew jokes yeah. in Israel versus Iran. You got to do a, an Israel versus Poland one. Man. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to take. You might this start a war, though. You're gonna be careful. <laughs> I'm to, that's the whole point is to avoid war. You're like the Dennis Rodman of Canada. You're gonna fucking run around starting all kinds of shit. Let's get up for Iran. Where all the women are virgins, but the camels are not. Whenever Fouad goes to McDonald's with his family, he always gets three Happy Meals: two for his daughter and one for his ten-year-old wife. <laughs> This battle is all about an Iranian roasting a Jew, which would be a lot more efficient if I was German. 
Israel is predominantly Jewish and full of many traditional Jewish occupations like jeweler, banker, and Palestine. <laughs> And now, it's time for everyone in Europe's favorite segment, Endangered Allies, where we talk directly to endangered species all over the world and ask them how the fuck they're doing. Today, we'll be talking to the Royal Bengal Tiger. Royal Bengal Tiger, are you there? I'm right here. Hey, so, how's it going out there, man? It's good, a little wet. Climate change is a bitch. Cool, and where are you located right now, sir? Uh, Bangladesh. Oh, the old Bang Bang. Yeah, there's these mangrove forests, but they're turning into swamps, and that's not cool. Oh my god, what do you eat in those areas? Well, ideally everything. I kind of like being an apex predator, but I think I'm going to be second place to a shark now. I've always kind of thought of you as like a land shark with fur. That's, I thought of myself as a land shark with fur, thank you. You're welcome. Finally, somebody said it. I man, I'm just glad I can acknowledge you. But yeah, man, are you, are you? They call you the Royal Bengal Tiger. What's the reason for that? Are you some kind of king or lord or emperor or something? I think some of that has to do with fear, but also I've got a really cool like stripe pattern, and I'm generally pretty awesome. So I think it's fair to call me a Royal Bengal Tiger. Yeah, fair enough. And you've got your face all over everything. You've got your face on cereals. You've got your face on football teams. Do you get any royalties for that or what? Ah, royalties. <laughs> you know, brand recognition is everything. I feel like once you get into the NFL, uh, you should start seeing some checks any day now. Um, it, it's kind of hard because I don't have a post office or opposable thumbs or a bank account. Is there anything that humans can do to help you survive the next hundred years so that we can still see you and watch you kill uh, humans on mm. nature documentaries? If, if, they, if they could stop with uh, you know, the rising uh, water levels, that'd be great, but it would also help if they just assembled in a neat line uh, for my consumption. That would be cool, too. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's fair. Some kind of uh, conveyor belt that goes directly into your mouth with small uh, you woodland know, animals? if there was an app like Uber Eats, that'd be cool, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Just bring me a kid uh, every couple hours. And, you know, I don't mind the delivery fee, whatever. The War of 1812 raged on the Canadian and American borders. The U.S. declared war to expand their empire and to kill Canada into being free. Even slave trader slash president Thomas Jefferson said that the acquisition of Canada will be but a mere matter of marching. But that freedom-loving slave raper was wrong. The first time the U.S. invaded, they were stopped in their tracks by the feisty hosers. Denied! The Americans did not allow blacks or natives to serve. However, the British Army didn't care what color their cannon fodder was and pushed any marginalized people they could to the front lines. The Americans would launch a second unsuccessful invasion, but again were denied entry into the back door of Her Majesty's colonies. And when reinforcements arrived for the British, they beat back the invading Yankees and pushed them all the way to Washington, D.C., where they burned the goddamn motherfucking White House to the fucking ground, biatch! After years of fighting, thousands of deaths, and zero changed borders, both sides decided that it was best to keep what they had already stolen from the natives and then also steal what the natives had left and then split it amongst themselves. Seriously, that's, that's what happened. Canada and America fought and the natives lost. How polite of us. Uh, okay, Ireland, known for its potatoes. A dish best served roasted. Ugh! Ugh! Okay. Do you guys remember when you two automatically downloaded to your to your phone to your iTunes? Yeah, no one wanted it. Right? They forced themselves upon us. That's what the Irish do. I wonder which priest they learned that from. That must be nice. Uh, that is very nice for Adrian to be able to, to, to do that. It must be nice for an English person to catch a bombing on stage instead of in a car for once. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> We're poets, didn't you know that? Okay. Britain, or the land of unfuckable trolls, as it is better known, is a putrid cesspool packed to the brim with sociopathic fuckwits who don't wash their assholes. Exhibit asshole. The English culture is best known for their theater, their pubs, and of course, their rape and murder of indigenous people around the world. They're great. They're great like that. It's not often you get to roast the worst country in history. This is special. This is like roasting Satan. Like, where do you even fucking begin? These people destroy everything they touch. They're not a country so much as they are a disease. Wherever the British go, they leave a wake of dead bodies, ugly children, and terrible comedians behind them. We're going to do some real life. We're going to talk about some real life yeah, yeah. battles. Why don't we start with uh, Canada versus Saudi Arabia? Ooh. That's a new one that kind Beautiful. of bubbled up recently, right? Yeah. Two oil countries with young leaders. Oh, baby. It's going to mm -hmm. be crazy. Yeah. Two sexy young leaders. <laughs> yeah, that young guy that took over Saudi Arabia, he's a little more, more ruthless. Than he's old. hardcore, man, because yeah. he was seen as a reformer. Mohammed bin Salman, MBS. Because he's young. He's like 32. He's younger than me. Yep. That's not good. No. You should not have the reins to a country that brutal. It's still an absolute monarchy. Yeah. This is like 12th century is, England, yeah, man. Kim Jong-un is 34, too. Yeah, no, this so, is... Like, this these guys are... Yeah, dude, Poland, the, the prime minister of, or president, or whatever the fuck they have in Poland, he's also 32 or something like that. What the fuck is going on? It's I like know. rugrats at the fucking <laughs> exactly. UN. Exactly. It's, it's, it's very dangerous when you have this many young hardliners in charge, yeah, right? Because so weird. They don't have... I mean, we always talk about how dumb people are, but young, the younger you are, the less context you have, right? Mm. And in this case, in Saudi Arabia's case, we're talking about he's young, he's rich, and he has absolute power, <laughs> right? It's not that far removed from Justin Trudeau, who's young and rich, doesn't have absolute power, but he doesn't, hasn't really felt the absence of power right. in his whole life, right? He's a, he's a yeah. dynasty, essentially. He is, but he was also elected. Yeah, true. That's a, I guess I'm. So, I'm I, I guess it's there. not like a direct comparison, <laughs> but yeah. more in he there. Didn't, like murder his uncle to become. No, he prime did not minister. murder his uncle. No, he did not. But <laughs> Maybe I just. Not. <laughs> I find that um, reliance on that kind of like inexperience mm -hmm. uh, has become a problem worldwide, where like the lack of experience is seen as oh, this is why this person should be in charge of a country because they've never done this shit before. Right. Doug Ford, Trump, Trudeau, MBS. Uh, the guy in Turkey, the guy in Poland, the new guy in Australia who almost unseated their prime minister. There's this resurgence of we don't like the elite. And there's a big there's a lot to be said about that, about like, you know, people in, with power and money controlling the direction of everybody on the planet. Sure. Right. But you don't want a plumber to be an astronaut. So if you don't want, you know, no, like guys like got, this to be leaders. But that's the mentality that people have, right, is sort of like, I just want the prime minister or the president or the leader to be like the guy I know down the street. Well, that that, that's not, no. you can't have that guy no. as a president. He needs to be an extremely elite thinker. He's got to be super high level intelligence. He's got to be not be able to be pushed around mm -hmm. somebody who's, you know, uh, assertive and compassionate and all these things like a leader of, of people is uh, someone that needs to be held to an extremely yeah. high standard. No, not, not your dr beer drinking buddy. I'm sure Joe's going to say that regular shit that America's racist. Yeah, says the country who's never had a black president. So. <laughs> also probably gonna say some shit like, oh, America's violent. Like Vietnam isn't? Are you kidding me? In America, we have to say, all right? Guns don't kill people. Vietnamese drivers do, all right? Sam Martin, everyone, it's always great when you put a face to racism, right? <laughs> The United States debt per person is $54,000. America is quickly becoming the poorest and most violent country in the world. Watch your back, Brazil! <laughs> Brazil, the country that is a huge nationwide cocaine and AIDS epidemic. Proving once and for all that Brazilians are good at doing two things. Cocaine and sucking dick for cocaine. I'm gonna start roasting India right now. Somebody gonna get a heart of you, baby! <laughs> but India is a, is a very old culture, right, guys? It's about uh, 4,000 years of rape culture. <laughs> Yoga, 
comes from India. Um, they created yoga from bending over backwards for the British. <laughs> India was different. That was like a domestic violence situation. So literally, me, my mom, and my brother ran away from home uh. under false names. Four-day journey seeking safety in Bangladesh. From, your, <laughs> from somebody in your family or from just My crazy biological people? father. Oh, wow. Yeah, we couldn't live with him anymore. So we had to run away under different names, cross a border. We're on the road for like four days in India. So that's not an easy thing to do either. So we were like basically... How many kids were with your mom? And oh, just me and my brother. I was 10... He was six, I guess, and my mom would have been in her 30s, early 40s. I don't, I'm and did you get on a plane sure. to come to Canada, or how did you get over? Oh, that, though. Canada, we came, like, legally as legal immigrants after living in Bangladesh for a few years. My mom got remarried, and we came here, uh, oh, okay. like, through normal channels. But, like, even in Bangladesh, because we arrived as refugees, essentially... Uh, my mom had these two mixed kids in tow. She's a single mother. Yeah. This is a moderately Islamic country. Yeah. And we lived... Well, not in a slum, but I call it slum adjacent. <laughs> so we lived in the neighborhood next to a slum because there's like levels of poverty in South Asia, right? And we're like one rung from the bottom, right? right? I think the place we lived in was not much bigger than this and we l shared it with three families. So <laughs> three families, wow, that <laughs> right? Way. So that's, I'm talking about a whole different level of existence there. It's a lot right? of different smelling farts in one Hell room. yeah, hell yeah. yeah. So then no, when we came here as legal immigrants, that's a whole different story and whatnot. But the reasons for people leaving... You have a really cool origin story, Manish. <laughs> you have like yeah. a, you have like an X-Man origin story. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'm a little meaner because of that, too. I don't think you're mean at all. I think it makes you more understanding and, and empathetic towards people around the world the more that you travel and when you've been in tougher situations. Like, people that I can't... It's so obvious when you talk to somebody and they've never been in a hard situation in their mm. life or they've never like been Oh, you can see that a mile been. Yeah, away. it's so nuts. You've counted with all people. You've talked to people that are poor. You can talk to people that are rich. You can talk to right, everybody. Right. You know, that's an important skill to have. And if mm -hmm. you've never been on both sides of that, if you're like, ew, it's dirty here. Yeah, yeah, old yeah. in this neighborhood. I'm like... <laughs> I got no fucking time for you. Well, yeah, that's what I that's what I tell people here when they're like, "How do you deal with the racism?" I'm like, "Listen, I've dealt with much worse. This yeah, is actually man. I mean, I know it sucks it, it for you to hear who live here, but yeah. I can tell that things can get worse. Not that this is an excuse for things not to be better mm. here. This isn't past the finish yeah, line. This is in Canada. this is not that's what even, everybody yeah. thinks. Nobody in the world is past the finish line. Mm -hmm. It's something that's always going to exist and stuff. But fuck, man, comparatively, I've been to some fucking places, man, and uh, yeah. in the, these cities in this country, uh, we have relative sort of peace people get on to, with each people other people get I on really to, like a, to what i in my experience and in my opinion only would consider a reasonable degree of getting along yeah i mean you know? like, you're gonna have this is the most <laughs> multicultural city on earth yeah 52 percent of the people in toronto are not from canada mm -hmm. so the idea that we have less than 100 murders a year in the fourth most populated city in north america it's a miracle it's a fucking it's, it's a unreal fucking it's miracle. unheard of people are like oh the guns in this fucking yeah. city i'm like what the fuck are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. you have, uh, what is it, 7 million people in the GTA or something? I forget what the population is, but I know the order goes. Uh, Mexico City, the biggest one in North America. Yeah. And then it's like 30 million. In the whole, yeah. It's so crazy. And then it goes New York, L.A., Toronto, Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it's like this massive city. But then if you compare it to, like, the violence in Chicago, which is the most comparable, like, yeah. numbers, it's like, dude, it's not, not even, even close. It's not even close. I mean, let's look at all those cities. Mexico City, Mexico LA, has a New York. Kidnapping issue. <laughs> you can dude, get you kidnapped kidding? like that in Yeah, Mexico we don't city. have, like, the fucking Bloods and the Crips having gang wars up here and all that I mean, kind of shit. Th there's obviously, like... A shooting a day is considered news in Toronto. And that's yeah. what's been happening for about, what, a few weeks now. Yeah, it's getting a little weird. Um, it is getting weird. It is. But I mean, to us, that, that level is laughable to most places on Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, especially outside of North America. I've, when we talk about, like, shootings, like, just from having lived in Bangladesh, like, again, not yeah. a basis for comparison. Like, Canada should not aspire to be like that. Yeah, but yeah. we're talking about a place that right now is shooting at people for protesting right, right the in institution when i was there uh at one point there was martial law if three or more males were out at after 7 p.m you could be arrested there was some kind i don't even remember what was going on. i was in high school because you might be starting a gang or like something like there was something i remember being pulled aside because me and two of my buddies were going home after like 
something i don't even remember like a whole crew of cops pointing their guns at us being like here you go let's see and we're like oh shit how old were you i was maybe 16 jesus Christ. what i loved about that encounter was one of my buddies was one of those guys who supported the government's martial law he was one of those dudes like no if they're the government's doing it it must be right they're only (laughs) going to go after the criminals and he was the one mouthing off the most to these cops and he fucking got, he got pummeled. I, I, I love this memory. That they I just have. beat the shit out of him? They beat the shit out of him. Because we used to tell him, man, you can't be like... You're a bootlicker. You think that they're only going to go after people you don't like? <laughs> people in power only look out for themselves. Yeah. Right? They're using your vote and your support to empower themselves. And when the time comes, they will squash you the way they squash me, the way they squash anybody you yeah, don't they like. Think it's like they're part of the team. It's like... It's exactly. Team, yeah. yeah, no, he, he, he got like fucking... He- like butted in the head with a pistol... <laughs> yeah, oh. like we're talking about third world cops man. you must really not. hate this guy the joy oh, that's coming hey, out of you I remember this like, so hey, clear they, they <laughs> smashed his head with a fucking rock <laughs> It was great. No, no, dude. He needed to learn his lesson. This guy was a prick and a half. He was, he was the kid who would rat you out to a teacher. You You know know what I mean? I think I believe in violence in small scales sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I think I don't believe in war. I don't believe in like violence against people who are uh, you can't defend themselves. But um, sometimes. Some motherfuckers need to get smacked. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Like that situation 100%. where he's like, ah, "Fuck you, you piece of crap," or whatever. Yeah. To a, somebody pointing a gun at him, it's like, <laughs> man, you're lucky you got punched. Dude, there were like, I don't even know how many squads that had stopped us. Like, it was like a major intersection, and there were like multiple cop cars. They were just waiting to see three guys, and they saw three high schoolers, oh and like God. literally all of their guns. Ca- I think like easily two. Well, actually about 12 or 13 at least like just people in a line in an arc i remember because we were trying to make a turn and they're like no you're not here you go and our the uh is an auto rickshaw so, like if you were in the <laughs> army in bangladesh would you live a decent life relative to the average person yeah yeah the yeah. army area i mean i don't know how it is now but the army area of the, the army part of town was considered like the nice part of town right if there were unmarried couples on the street they would punish them or humiliate them by maybe shaving your head right there on the street and they could do that to you if you were did you see that happen no but it happened to my friend like wow. several <laughs> friends actually like wow. guys and girls like they were like you know that particular soldier just was ultra conservative and he's like you know what i don't like the fact that like are you two married no okay well get out here You're what religion was it mostly well bangladesh, bangladesh is mus- uh, muslim mostly oh, okay, islamic yeah. and it was and that this was when it was moderate now things are going far more conservative that was moderate the head that was days. fucking moderate back the, in the good old head shaving again, days. again think about it this way that was still considered oh the army is going too far because people it was okay for you and your girlfriend to be out in public mm. maybe not hold hands maybe not kiss but it was still okay people would still give you looks but it was okay but then for whatever reason for a few months the army was in charge and they're like you know what we don't like that mm. so out here if some if the cops stopped you and shaved your head because they didn't like your tattoos oh they'd be in jail dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be in national news but the, out there, you don't even think that that is something you can fight. Right. You know, you're going to get beat up on the street. That's Unless, I, again, you're one of the 0.01% who's rich and mm. connected. Or like in the army or whatever. Something right? like that. That's a very small part, part of the So that, that, that kind of uh, ideology or that kind of, sorry, of, uh, outlook on life exists in Russia as well. And it helps people like Putin. That's why there's so many strong men in charge of countries like that. It's... At the end of the day, he's a representative of yours. He's not necessarily right. doing something for and you. And that's why, like, I mean, we like to shit on the holes in democracy and stuff like that. But the uh, the ability to just speak freely and have open it's discourse is so huge, fucking important. Huge. And it's such a small part of the world where it's protected and it's it's celebrated. It really right? is a very small part of the world. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like, sort of people... There's some things about... Um, culture uh, european culture that drives everybody nuts it sucks you know mm-hmm. what i mean there's a lot of shit that that sucks about it there's the imperialism and all the history of it's all fucked up but there are some good things that this part of the new world needs to hold on to 100 like, percent. Really yeah hard, i mean which is the discourse again being able to just mm-hmm. openly share ideas and not have gun put in your mouth over it and at the end of the day as fucked up as shit does get i think it's probably best to be in this part of the world like i, w- I spent a lot of time in europe man and what i realized is like 
mostly in England, there, there's a reason everybody left there and came here. Yeah. It fucking sucks. <laughs> it it does. fucking rains all the time. Yeah. The people are fucking angry. Everything's fucking shitty for your health. The mm-hmm. fucking place is owned by a bunch of fucking inbred bloody Germans from yeah. fucking 500 <laughs> years ago. And there's no way a, a human being can, can rise above the class that they're born in. Essentially. Yeah. Even yeah. if you're a fucking soccer player like Beckham who goes from nothing to mm-hmm. a billionaire, you're not hanging out at the same parties as the fucking queen and the prince and shit. Your they blood's wrong, shit. dude. And they're always going <laughs> to yeah. own it for the rest yeah. of their fucking life. And that fucks your head up. So people from all over the world have come over here to be like, okay, these Europeans fucked up and killed all these native guys and stuff like that. But at least these laws at least have enough room that you can fucking... To actually have a shot. To, be to a, have a fair a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, yeah, to yeah. become like fine. To be like what a fucking human being is capable mm-hmm. of being. To go as far as you can possibly go and like pursue your, your, your interests, right? Your Hood's a Joke show is now... Are you doing it weekly or something? No, no, now? monthly. It's at Yuck Yucks now. So it's been oh, at com- Yuck Yucks. Yeah, yeah. It's been at Comedy Bar for like four years now. Nice. Uh, the last year or a couple of years, I'd been turning away a lot of people because you know, like, it's a great place. Good problem to have. Dude. Exactly. So now, so we moved it to a bigger one. Uh, yeah. I know Mark Breslin's a fan of the show. He, he's yeah, like, good. Oh. Yeah, Mark would be a fan of the show. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yuck Yucks. Uh, Yuckyucks dot com. You can check mm-hmm. out for tickets for that. Your hood's a joke. And uh, is there any other uh, social medias we can? Oh, you they maybe? can follow me at Terror Suspect across all platforms. At Terror Suspect, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Well, thanks for hanging out with us on Glorious and Free. Sweet. Everybody have a sweet night. Pom-pom. Unless you're watching in the day, and then, you know, <laughs> have a good day.